Hey, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the Early Sabbath Evening Show. My name is Pastor Lucien Luima, and I am your host. Tonight, we have another spectacular show in store for you. We will have special guest Jennifer Fenelon, who will help us understand and give us her insight on tonight's subject, which is how to represent Christ. We will also have special music by three people, and they are from Philadelphia French SDA Church. Look, sit back, relax, because this show is about to be great. We will be right back. Welcome back and thank you for joining us. Again, tonight our subject is representing Christ. Now, one thing I can appreciate about this country, the United States of America, despite the president's effort to limit it by placing walls, is our diversity. They try to put up borders and restrictions, but America seems to find itself becoming more and more diverse. If you come to America like Eddie Murphy, or you are already in America like me, you'll find Asians, Bayesians, Indians, Malaysians, Egyptians, Moroccans, Jamaicans. Of course, you'll find Americans, and most importantly, you'll find Haitians, and many more. Oh, and you'll find our president, President Trump. You'll find everybody in America, which is why I love it here. What makes it so unique is that even though the people here are from other countries, they don't forget where they come from. You see that whenever, you'll see that whenever the country they're from is celebrating a special holiday. For example, it's officially May, and there's a lot of countries celebrating their flag day this month, like Austria, whose flag day is actually today. Poland's flag day is tomorrow. Bosnia's flag day is on the 4th of May. Finland's flag day is on the 29th of May. You're like, Pastor, you're skipping some. I know, I'm saving the best for last. Sudan's flag day is on the 20th of May. And finally, on May 18th, it's the prestigious Haitian flag day. <laughs> now, if you know anything about Haitian flag day in America, it's a whole entire show. There are concerts, shows, festivals, parties, events, church programs, and many more. People wear their Haitian colors and Haitian outfits to school. I remember when I was in high school, I was the freshest Haitian kid on Haitian Flag Day. No one had anything on me. People would wear their Haitian colors and flags to work to store, to the store, to Walmart, to Target, to the flea market. God forbid, if they're sick, they would even wear their Haitian colors and represent in the hospital. Like you're about to go into surgery and the doctors are pushing you down the hallway on, on a hospital bed to go into the operating room and all you can see is your Haitian flag tied to the bed rails, hanging down and draping because you want everybody to know that's your Haitian. That's just how we do it. On Haitian Flag Day, people would wear their Haitian flag and their colors everywhere. Why? Because they want to remind everyone and their mom that even though our current situation is in the United States, we proudly represent the first black country to gain its independence, and that is the country of Haiti. We represent a lot of things, and if you really think about it, if we believe in and are proud of something, we usually represent it. We represent where we come from, we represent our culture, 
and we also represent our spouses. A wife is an extension of her husband, and her husband, and a husband is an extension of his wife. They are one according to the Bible, and they also represent each other. So she can't go out anymore acting a fool. He can't go out, go out acting all crazy anymore. When she moves, she can't move like she's single. Hello, ladies. When he's in public, he can't act like he's not in a relationship. If you're single like me, you can move however you please. I have no commitments to anybody except for God. But if you're not single and you're married, you can't move like you're single because you represent someone else. Some of you men out there are flirting with other women and you have a whole entire living wife at home. Some of you women are on these streets a little bit too loose. You are a little bit too friendly. You gave me your number a little bit too quick. You have a whole entire living man at home. You need to tranquilo because you represent somebody. We represent our country, we represent our culture, we represent our spouse. Some of us even represent our bosses. You don't act a certain way because you work for a certain boss who wouldn't allow it and has a certain image he or she wants to uphold for his or herself and for the company. So because you work for them, you have to range your call, which means fix yourself. We don't have a problem with representing our country, our culture, our spouse, even our bosses, but we seem to have an issue representing our God. We have a problem representing Jesus Christ. What's funny or more so disappointing is that Jesus is the one that made you and put you on this earth. Jesus is the one that placed you in a certain family from a certain country that you're now representing. Jesus is the one that gave you your spouse who you're also representing. Jesus is the one that gave you your career and that boss who you're representing. You all see where I'm going here. Jesus is the one who gave you everything. You even, everything you have, even your breath. But many of us somehow fail to represent Jesus. I praise God because many of you are baptized. But I'm also afraid that many of you have forgotten the meaning of your baptism. Baptism means that you've decided to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, which means that you've committed to being uh, in a relationship with Jesus. You're baptized and now you're in a relationship, which means that you are no longer spiritually single, which means that you can no longer move or act like you're single because you now represent your spiritual partner, Jesus Christ. That representation entails that certain things you used to do, you can't do anymore. You can't drink or smoke anymore because if people see you, it looks like you're representing someone else, not Jesus Christ. Certain places you go, certain places you can't go anymore because if people were to see you there, it wouldn't look like you're representing Jesus. In fact, it would look like you are representing the world. Someone wouldn't come up to you in the club and say, hey, you look like, you look different, man. You go to a church or something? Are you like a Christian? No one would say that in a club. Instead, they would offer you a drink, a margarita, some whiskey, some tequila. There's a drink called French 75. They would offer you a drink called the woo-woo. That's a drink. Or vodka and orange juice, rum and Coke. Some white Russian or some Hennessy. Some of y'all look, look confused like, huh, what is he talking about? I'm glad you don't know what I'm talking about because you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, Amen. covered by, oh my, the blood of Jesus Christ. You get to church at 9 a.m. 
Yes, you do. But they would offer these drinks instead of wondering which church you go to or what God you serve, because in their mind, if you're listening to what they're listening to, dancing to what they're dancing to, wearing what they're wearing, acting like they're acting, talking like they're talking, in their minds, you must be just like them. When you commit to a relationship with Jesus Christ, you start representing Christ. And that representation entails that you can't go to certain places and act any type of way or move however you please. That representation also entails that you tell people about Jesus. If you don't believe me, let's go to Matthew 28, where Jesus gives his disciples the Great Commission, beginning at verse 19, and it reads, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. If you don't know what that means, that means you have to tell literally everybody about Jesus everywhere you go. Look, if you didn't get it so far, we have a special guest, Jennifer, who will help us to break down and give her insight. Please help me to welcome Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thank you for asking. Now, Jennifer, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Or a lot. Hi. My name is Jennifer. And um, a little bit about me. I'm from Haiti, born and raised. Um, yeah, I'm a Christian. That's good. Yes. And also, um, well, I'm just here to give you guys um, a little bit of my experience with God and like the title say for how do we represent God. So there's not much I have to say about me. That's so, good. Well, yes. what, what is your profession? Oh, I'm a nurse. Yeah. Yes. Did you say that? I don't know if you said that. But now you know she's a nurse. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. You're only a few words, but that's okay. Um, what does it mean to you to represent Christ? What does it mean to represent Christ? Based on my experience yeah. with them, it means a lot. Good. It means a lot to me because one thing I always tell people, we are not special. We're unique. Hmm. You know how you have a certain amount of potassium, a certain amount of sodium is the same thing in the outside world. So if I went through something, I'm pretty much sure there are a lot of people going through the same thing. So if my experience can help these people, it's worth it like for me to present God to them. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now, as a Christian, um, do you feel like representing Christ is important? If so, why? It is very important. Um, it is very important because you don't only represent God by preaching or going out there. People, like, the way you act, the way you talk, the way you, um, comp how do I say that? The way you your actions or the way people see you. Because some people, you wouldn't think that you are ministering to them, but they are actually watching the way you are living your life. Mm. And by that, they get to question themselves. Okay. You know, yeah. why is she doing that? What has God done for her? Mm. And why am I not doing this? I'm a Christian. Why am I not doing this? Why don't I have this testimony? Mm. Why have I not have, you know, um, this type of experience with God. Wow. So. Wow. That's good. Okay, so they're saying that you never know who's looking at you. You never know who's watching. So 
you got to make sure you're on point, especially when representing Christ. Yes. Because you never know who you might bring to the church. Exactly. And yeah. this is the other thing, too. As Christians, we more, you'll find a lot of Christians into, into their doctrine. Mm. But serving God, it goes beyond the doctrine. Wow. So it's most likely I tell people, you don't see your father as the head of the house. At first, you right. see you see him as your father, like somebody you can talk to, somebody you can go to, instead of seeing you know the strict person or the disciplined, like you know the one who's disciplining you, or however like your father you know reacts to things. Right. So if you do the same thing with Jesus, you do the same thing with the Father. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you will have another view on how your Christianity is. Wow. So you got to treat God like a father first. Yes. Wow, I like that. Yes. Wow. Somebody you can go to anyways. This is everything you're doing anyway, so it's nothing new that's to true. him. And that's why he says in the Bible, confess to one another. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we keep things in. Mm -hmm. We don't talk. We sure. don't speak to other people. And especially in the church, like, you feel like you will be criticized on the way you are living your life or right. the way you are doing things. But sometimes when he said, you know, uh, confess to one another, also you can go in your room and speak to him. That's true. Wow. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Now, how do you personally try to represent Christ in your workplace at home? How do you personally try to represent Christ? In everything and everywhere. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I get the comment, why are you always talking about God? why you are always mentioning the bible or i even have friends telling me this is a mother of reality you are talking about the bible i'm like well the teachings i get the morals i get they are from the bible wow. so if i have to talk i have to talk about the bible have to. so yeah. it's like i do it everywhere like even my like where i work everybody knows mm. and i always have a testimony to give so so practically speaking, um, at work, you're on your break. You know, you're Haitian. You don't eat sandwiches. But you like your ziggy and sospoir. So you're on your break, and you're eating your meal. And you have a group of people sitting around you. What do you tell them? Well, how does that start? How does like that represent representing Christ start? Well, it's not like, you know, sitting with a lot of people. Right. I might be, you know, when I used to work um, in a nursing home, like, even when I'm passing my medication or anything, mm -hmm. I always mention God. How do you do it? Like, Well, you know, you give people a random of God bless you, God loves you, somebody's going through something, you tell them it is going to be okay. Wow. And, you, you know, and another thing, like let's say if it's not at my job or if it's somewhere else, and this is a problem with a lot of Christians, mm -hmm. it's based on what the person is going through, then you go in. Like, there's a certain way to do it. Like, I believe the Apostle Paul said, you have to do it with love. Mm. Like, let's say if somebody's not a Christian, uh, let me give my own experience. Okay. If I know you are a Christian, if I have to correct you, I'm going to hold you accountable for what you are doing. Wow. Why? Because you know what you are doing is wrong. Mm. Wow. Even though you are not convicted by the Holy Spirit yet, but I still have to tell you, hey, you know what you're doing is wrong. But let's say if I'm, if I'm you know, somewhere like and somebody's not a Christian, mm -hmm. I'm going to approach you another way. First of all, I want to know why you are acting this way. Right. Because for every issue and how people act, there's always an underlying mm. um, situation. Right. It's like you see a prostitute. The first thing you said, well, she's doing this, she's doing that. No, but do you know what she's going through at home? Some people, they do it, you know, because they want to do mm -hmm. it. But some people, they just don't have a choice. Right. And you do not approach people also if you're not able to help them mentally yeah. or at least, like, you know, help them out, give them money or help them do something else with their lives. Right. So. Because if you uh, approach them based on their situation, nothing without, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to help them or... I guess the only thing you're doing is cr really criticizing them. Exactly. Making the Jesus never work. went anywhere without giving people food. Wow. <laughs> so. Mm, that is true. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Okay. So um, you represent Christ in your job and uh, at home. How do you represent Christ 
for do you have younger people in who's living with you? Yes. Okay. I have my little cousin. Okay. Right now he's nonstop praying. I'm not saying it's annoying, but I guess that's why he gets at home. So, because yeah. <laughs> my mom is always like, you know, on the prayer line. Yeah. Or I have um I have a, a YouTube channel, and also I, there's a prayer line that um it's not my prayer line. Mm -hmm. My cousins in um, Sarasota they have a youth prayer line. Okay. Every Saturday, every Saturday evening. So we have people from all religions, not mm -hmm. only seven days. They are seven days, but. You know, we get everybody on the line. Wow. And we get to, you know, share things. We praise God mm -hmm. and we speak about one whole chapter and we have somebody we have a speaker. Right. So um so basically even at home, most likely you you like you'll find me either reading my Bible or Okay. Yeah. I haven't watched Netflix wow. like in about a week now or two weeks. You haven't what? I haven't watched Netflix for like two weeks now. Wow. You're so better that's than a me. good thing. Wow. Yeah. That's good. That's <laughs> good. I'm pretty sure your cousin is picking up on it because sometimes, yes. you know, when they're so little, they don't understand, but they can see. And that seeing goes a long way. Yeah, but know? right now it's out of hand because two in the morning, if he doesn't want to go to sleep, he distracts you with praying. Well, your cousin is the one praying? Exactly. That little one. Praise so God. he'll just say everything out of his mouth. Everything. Well, God do this, God do that. <laughs> the blood of Jesus, like he'll just like talk to not go to sleep. Well, that's a good habit. Yeah, <laughs> until it's you that cannot go to sleep. Well, <laughs> so, oh my. Well, look, that's that's yeah. that's good news. I don't um, know. Uh, <laughs> that's that's really good news. Okay, yes. I'm really got to do that. See that because you know, <clears throat> growing up, especially myself, all I saw was my parents praying and praying and praying. At first, it's like, what, what do you pray so much, you know? But then you grow older a little bit, and then you get in an issue, and then because you saw them praying so much, you're like, you know what, let me try this out. And that's kind of my story, so. Okay. Um, my walk with Christ, it's a whole different, like, experience. Mm. Growing up, spiritually, I was awake. I, okay. I, so... At a young age, six, seven, mm -hmm. I already knew about both realms. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the I knew about our realm and I knew about the spiritual. You know, the spiritual realm and I knew about both good and evil. But I can't tell you how I knew. Wow. If I have a dream, I can tell my mom, like, even like, just an example. Usually when it's, you know, evil, it will take a form of an animal in my dream and talk and speak. But if it's God, God usually like he'll speak to me in real life, or I just hear a voice say, go to the Bible and open it. And I'll open it on a chapter that is exactly like something that I need to know right now. Mm. So it's like growing up up to the point where I came to the US, like my relationship with God, it was strong, very strong. I was not afraid of anything. Wow. Like I spoke to everyone, priests, pastors, Freemasons, um, R Rosie Crucian. Mm. So there are a lot of people, and why that did not, because my mom didn't want me to. But it's like, you know, you meet people, and I grew up like in a Catholic um, school, okay. like 14 years in Catholic schools, but I knew wrong from right. I knew exactly what was going on. That's why they have my confirmation, because you know, you have your first communion, mm. and you have your confirmation. So by 13, 14, I, I already knew so much that I was like, no, I am not confirming my faith in something that I have other knowledge of. Wow. So up to the point where I came here, and it was like a whole other thing. Because here, I was on my own, and it's like the places I work at, it's like it was a whole other environment. So I wasn't used to that. And when you try to fit in, and you already have knowledge, you already have a connection with God, it's not easy. Wow. And you will never feed it. You'll always feel like an outcast. It wow. doesn't matter how hard you try. So it was like, I was like a straight believer. Then I came to the US. It was like for almost like six years, I was in between. Wow. I would say like lukewarm. I don't want to call it that. 
<laughs> but I would say it's lukewarm because, like I was telling Pastor, I felt like it was like I was being a double agent. Wow. Like I would bring people to church, but at the same time, if you come in, hey Jen, let's go out or, or let's go eat out or let's do this, let's do that, mm -hmm. I'll say okay. Wow. So I was, you know, like in both parties until 2017, 2018. It was like a whole 360. Wow. Tell us about that 360. So the 360, you know how you do, you are doing something. Mm -hmm. You read the Bible, you know it's wrong. Right. But the moment you are convicted by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it's a whole other thing. Wow. You will never do that thing again. So I have one example. Okay. I used to work at a recreational center. Okay. And one time, because you know recreational center, and it's mostly like um, the people I used to work at, they used to wear like shorts. So we, we all wore shorts. Mm -hmm. and short sneakers and our shirt that's that's a dress code or you wear like ties right. tights so one day i went in the bathroom and there was this lady that was with her son and when i came out the baby was three no he wasn't three yet maybe two or th oh, like it was a toddler like two going to three right. i believe and he looked at me and he looked at his mom Pay attention to what I'm saying. He looked at me, he looked at his mom, and he was like, Mom, she's wearing her underwear. Yes. So, wow. and my, like, that's what everybody wears. But that wasn't a child talking. That was God talking through that child to try to make me see what I'm doing. Wow. I don't want to be emotional. It's okay. But, that was around 2015. Holy Spirit, why are you doing this? So, 2018. Mind you, I used to tell people about this experience. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this child told his mom this or that. And then... Take your time. Take your time. God is so good. Yes, he is. 2018, I was in my room. Mm. I was praising God. <laughs> and I thought about <laughs> what the baby told me. <laughs> and I looked back at everything hmm. that I was doing. And that was the day the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. That was the day the Holy Spirit convicted me on what modesty means. A lot of time we're doing things that we believe that are right, but it only takes one moment, one minute, one second for the Holy Spirit to have you make a 360. That's it. And that's another reason why um, I don't judge people. And that's why I want people to be able to have this type of experience with God. This type of experience is because you get to, I always tell people, without knowledge, you cannot gain wisdom. No. And even when you gain wisdom, the spirit of discernment is one of the things that you need to have. Yeah. In serving Christ, it's not per like things are not going to get perfect. It's like 
that day, I was like, oh my God, I was really a double agent. Wow. Because the same people who told me they were Christians too, like the same friends I was hanging out with, It was like, you will not find, like, you need people. As a, cre like, Christians need people to hold them accountable of what they're doing. That's right. You cannot keep going around and doing the same thing over, over, and over. Like, in my, like, for me, it was like, I just woke up, and I heard God said, Jennifer, where are you? Huh. And it was like, do you remember who you are? Like, you are my child. Wow. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's not even like I was doing bad things, but it's just a little bit like I stray away from God. And it was funny too, because I was like, wow, God took six years to call me out. And on my seventh year, that was like my Sabbath. Wow. Which was funny. I was like, God, you really did that? And that day, you know, like, <laughs> I know that's not a word I should be using, but I felt like I was rotten. Hmm. And it's one thing when you can see yourself, like, I mean, outside of not only that you feel it, but you are like, it, it's like, it's a deep feeling hmm. to feel like you've strayed away so much that you feel like you're rotten. And that's the thing, nobody around me, like, because most of the time your entourage, the fact that everybody's doing it, it becomes normal. Mm. But it's not normal. Because right. as Christians, like, there is a reason why God only had one nation. One nation. Can you imagine yeah. how many other nations they were? But uh, God only chose one. And that's one of the reasons I believe people say that other gods existed before God. Because imagine you have a hundred nations, right? right? So God chose one. Right. He chooses one. So the other 99, they are serving other gods. Do you really think that 1%? Hmm. That 1%, like a lot of people will know about it. The only reason they knew is because God was making them do things that was extraordinary. Mm. Like Rahab, Jesus' grandmother. Mm -hmm. When the people went to um, her city, she was like, I've heard of your God. Mm. That's why she, she said, I heard of your God. Mm. And she hid the people that Joshua, um, Moses sent at the, um, Joshua sent at the time. Mm. Wow. And now look. She wasn't an Israelite, but because she believed in God, right. she heard about him. Her and her family, they were all saved. Wow. And not only that, the other aspect of that scripture is the fact that, I don't remember, I believe, I'm not sure if Caleb was one of the men that went, but I believe there were like three men. Mm -hmm. So they told her, have your family come inside of your house that when we see that piece of clothing, hmm. we will not kill anyone that is in the house. Wow. And that was a condition. And as a, and as a Christian, there are recommendation, requirements, things that you, you should do and you shouldn't do. Hmm. And the Apostle Paul said it. All things, you can, like, all things are permitted, something like that, but he doesn't do them. Hmm. So. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you for your testimony. Man. No, the Holy Spirit betrayed me. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. No. That's okay. But <laughs> That's okay. He has a way yeah. of just taking over. That's okay. Um, I'm really grateful that the Holy Spirit talks to you. You know, and um, maybe it took seven years, and but God is perfect. No, He broke me down. Like yeah. broke me. Like you know, like when you can feel because I was sick too, and that was the year that He broke me down and built me up. You know, yeah. um, whenever God is trying to prepare you for something, he has to break you down. He has to put you through the fire. Don't you notice Joseph, right after the dreams, that's when he had to go to the pit and then slavery so God can prepare him. 
you know, so let's be grateful that God breaks us down. I know, I'm very grateful, yeah. and I always tell my mom that too. Um, whatever you are going through, because it happened to, to the Apostle Paul as well. It right. happened to Jacob. Right. When God, um, when he fought with God, and then he asked God to touch him, and God touched his hip, and his hip got dislocated, right? right? But it was for his good. Sometimes, whatever you are going through, the difficulties that you find in your life, there re there's a reason. There's a reason, because God wants you to see you did not do it yourself. We did it together. Mm. I did it. Mm. Because as, as human we tend to say, well, I did it, not God. Mm. Well, who gave you breath? Like, wow. who gave it to you? Mm. And it's just like seeing the supernatural, like, things that God does. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Mind so. blown. Wow, okay. That's yeah. good. Well, I can see it's clear how your experience, you can't not tell people about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, for what you went through, um, I, I understand. I see the passion. I see it. Um, but is it ever? Is there ever a time where you, you find it hard to tell someone about Jesus? Like, is, you know, is it, are you shy sometimes? What, do you ever find yourself in a situation where it's like, I really want to tell them about Jesus, but, like, there's other people there? Tell me, is there ever a time where it's like hard? I do not approach strangers okay. <laughs> about Jesus. I'm very shy. People don't believe that, but I, I am. I didn't. I don't believe it. Oh yes, <laughs> believe it. I'm very shy, and um, not now because even if like I don't say, oh, you know, Jesus loves you, but I'll just give a little bit of my testimony. Right. And this is another thing too. I've seen the most people who've helped me, they're actually people who don't like me. So I've seen God use my enemies for my good. Wow. I've seen people who generally, like, I don't even know how to say it, people who don't like me, like I've had those type of experiences where these people, they are the one helping out. And you know, and it took me long to realize that it says it in the Bible. I didn't know it says like, you know, everything works out for your good for right. those who love the Lord. Right. So wow. yeah. There's also a verse that says the Lord will use your enemy or make your enemy your footstool. You see? <laughs> <laughs> so it works though. God is a funny guy. It's a funny he guy. Is. Um, he, is. he tends to use the people who's trying to tear you down, but in some odd way, God is like so genius, like, and they don't even realize it. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. They yeah. don't realize it. Yeah. They don't. Mm -hmm. And um, here's another thing too. The reason, like you know, like I said, I don't judge people, but Christians, I hold you accountable. I don't yeah. care. It's like I give you, like you taking, let's say, a biology class. Mm -hmm. You study the book. You know the book. Right. You go to church. Right. So tell me, mm. you know, at least feel some type of way. My way wasn't better mm -hmm. because it was almost like 50-50. And right. that's why I say, well, if I'm doing 50-50, I'm not doing it. Mm. It doesn't matter how many people I bring to church. Right. But for myself, God says you cannot have two masters. No. And in Revelation, Jesus says, if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you. Right. So when you look at this conception so it's like you you just you just cannot judge people and if it took me like if god had worked on me for like six years so what tells you that the person that you're judging right now this person won't be the mm -hmm. one helping you with your mm -hmm. spiritual christmas uh, with you know getting closer to god in 10 years wow that's deep yeah yeah you know, everybody, I wish the older people would realize that everybody has a journey. Sometimes, and it's crazy how God bought them out at like 30, 35, maybe 40. And um, 
through their own personal journey, but they'll look at some young people who's, you know what I'm saying, struggling, and then they'll judge them, but fail to realize that they too are on a journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they might be the very ones later down the line who might help you. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, right now, I'm what? I'm 27, so I'm turning 28. Okay. So, basically, like, I won't look at somebody who's 21, 20, 23 and expect you to be like me. Right. No way. Yeah. Because the things I went through, maybe it's your time to go through this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of, actually, patience, tolerance, and temperance to be able to do that. Mm. To be able to, you know, say, okay, let me look at it this way. It's wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it does because the first thing like we do is go ahead and judge people mm. on how they're living their life. How they're like. Sometimes if I feel like I'm going to judge, I'm like, oh, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. Wow. I'm good. Mm. Just to not have the thought right. in my mind to judge that person. I'll just mm. act like I don't know. Wow. Do you feel like, we're going a little off topic here, but do you feel like, the urge to judge somebody is like temptation. It's like you're being tempted to well, judge somebody. God told Cain that uh -huh. in um, in the Old Testament. Yeah. When God told Cain, you know, sin lies outside of your door. Uh -huh. It's up to you if you let it in. Yeah. The thing is, when we look at the spiritual realm, uh -huh. right? That I remember one time I was telling Pastor Dad, I was like, our feelings are like. Um, it's like a magnetic field. Right. They're like electrical. Mm. Like you attract. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to ask yourself, why do I have this, people, this person in my life? Wow. There's a reason. Mm. Do I have this person trait that is attracting this person to me? Mm. You know, you right. have to kind of look, look you, you, have, you have to look at it that way. Right. So the urge, yes, it is an urge. Like for you, like criticizing someone in a bad way, mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. That's not. And that's why I always tell people, love, there are, there's a lot of definition for love. Yeah. can be good, can be bad. That's true. Temperance, you can have temperance for a good thing and you have it for, for, for a bad one. That's true. Criticizing, it can be good, it can be bad to the way where you judge a person that much mm -hmm. that this person might want to commit suicide. Like they feel like they're not enough. Mm -hmm. Like they feel like God is not in their life. Like they feel like they cannot do enough. Mm. So do you... That person's soul, it will rest on you. Wow. Because you are the cause of it. Mm. Wow. That's deep. Uh, trust me. Like, <laughs> I had to pray, God. I'm like, God, please tie my mouth. If I'm not supposed to say something, close my mouth. Keep my mouth closed. Like, this type <laughs> yeah. of prayers, you have to do them. Yeah, that's true. That's you have true. to do them. Sometimes we can't help ourselves. We need Jesus to help us. That's what so, he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, for the young people, what, what, what do you think... What do you think is the reason why a lot of us young people don't represent Christ? Like, you're young, you went through your journey, but like, you know, in this world, in this environment, what do you, th what makes it so hard for the young people? Um, the first thing mm -hmm. is their friends. Mm. They are afraid to be judged. Wow. For some, is it it's their time to search around. Like you have a lot of young people right now who are engaged like in witchcraft oh. or new age and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to get knowledge, which that's what, um, even my friend reminded me that the other day she posted some, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Because remember that's how Eve, that, that's, that's the whole reason why we're here because she, she saw it that it was good. You know, like she wanted more knowledge. She wanted to mm -hmm. know more. Right. And they'll be like, they feel like the people they hang out with, mm -hmm. these people will judge them wow. for representing Jesus. Or they feel like, oh, wow, like me, I don't care anymore. And people say, why are you always talking about God? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to put God in everything? Um, hello. Right. He's my everything. Mm -hmm. So I have to put him in everything. Right. He's the reason for everything. Exactly. Yeah. So, and... What I don't like, it's basically like people are afraid to be judged mm. if they have to talk about Jesus. Right. Or they might feel like they, are, they will be rejected by their friends or people won't hang out with them anymore. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. When you take your walk seriously with Christ, you will lose friends. You will lose family. Wow. Um, 
it's going to be, like I said, a whole 360. Certain things you used to do, you won't be doing these things anymore. And you have to be serious about your walk with them. Mm. And that's the other thing. If you ask, he said in the Bible, if you ask, it shall be given to you. Wow. Wow. And we tend as Christians not to ask. We try to take everything upon us. Mm. And then later on we say, well, God didn't do anything about it. Mm. Well, did you ask him? Mm. I always tell people, God is not an invader. He does not invade your space mm. if you do not invite him in. Wow. Wow. So. That's good. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, you're touching up on it, how you have to get connected to God. You have to ask, um, you know, but, well, along the same lines, what advice do you have to some young people? You know, they watch the show. They're watching now. And they're like, you know what? Uh, my friends do get to me. You know, uh, peer pressure is real. I really don't want to get embarrassed. I, don't really, I really don't want to lose my friends. But you know what? I, I really want to start representing Christ in my circle. Um, and maybe they're not as bold as you. So what advice do you give them so to help them start that process? Um, this is something my mom taught me growing up. My mom would tell me, if you ever have to choose between me and God, you need to always choose God. Wow. And it was like she was saying it to me over and over and over. And right now, I even told her, I'm like, are you even sure that was you telling me this? Mm. Because that could have been like, you know, just God used her to instill that in me. Wow. Because remember, Jesus even said it. Those who are my parents, my mother, my mother, they are the ones who are serving God. Wow. And now I'm going to go outside of the natural realm now. Mm-hmm. Spiritually, your parents, your friends, whoever is around you, they are just vessels. Wow. They are expendable at any time. Wow. They cannot help you with anything other than physical things or introduce you to Christ. I had to change my whole environment. I had to change the type of conversations I was having with people. Mm. In other words, if whatever you are doing, it does not represent God, you're not supposed to be doing it. Wow. And let me tell you, it's hard to see that you are doing something bad. Like you always thought like you couldn't live without a friend. Next thing you know, this um that or that specific friend mm. accept Christ. Wow. Who's left alone now? Mm. You are. Yeah. Wow. Because I believe um the Bible says it that God doesn't have a sherry, like a sherry, like mm-hmm. because the same way I always tell people that too. You cannot, don't let God pass you over. Mm. Don't say, oh, I'm not doing this for God. I'm not doing that for God, Mm. for a friend, because I'm afraid my friend might think wrong about me serving God. Guess what? (laughs) That's why I love this man. Mm. (laughs) He will use your friend and make you see that he's using your friend. And then now you sit down and ask God, why? But you made that choice. Mm. You chose not to represent him. Yeah. You chose not to serve him the way he wants you to. Mm. He will use the same person that you didn't want to use him for. Wow. He will use that same person. Wow. So when I said that your parents, your friends, or like your family members are expendable, I'm not saying not to love them. You need to love them. Mm. But the first commandment is to love God. Your God. Yes. Wow. God comes first. God comes first. So. Wow. Okay. And Jesus said it too. Like uh, when he said, um, I believe whoever loves his life will lose it, mm-hmm. and whoever gives his life for me will mm-hmm. gain it. Wow. It's a beautiful so. passage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, Jennifer, I really appreciate you. I know the viewers really appreciate you and your testimony. Um, I'm just, we're just so happy that we had you today on the show, tonight on the show. Thank you for having me. That was a blessing. Yes. I'm sorry, I cried. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit work <laughs> through you. Um, so, okay, so right now, um, right after this break, we will have special music by three young 
ladies. We'll be right back after the break. Okay, thank you.
That was a wonderful, wonderful selection. We do serve a great and powerful God. I'm going to want to thank Jennifer for her testimony and for helping us understand how to represent Christ. Now, when it comes to representing Christ, it's, in fact, a mandate from God. The Great Commission in Matthew 28, which says we ought to go all across the globe to preach the gospel and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the Holy Ghost. That literally means wherever you are, you need to tell people about Jesus. Now, let's go to the Bible right quick, because if this wasn't convincing, let me convince you through the Word of God. Because like in today's, well, this week's lesson, it shows, it tells you about sola scriptura, which means the Bible alone. The Bible is enough. So let's go to the Word because the Word has enough power to transform somebody. So 2 Corinthians 5, verses 20. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 20. It says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled, reconciled to God. I like this one in Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 33, but not the whole thing. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. 1 Peter 2, verses 9. Take notes. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's be honest. A lot of us, we weren't in the position we are now. Some of us were lost. We didn't know what we were supposed to do. Some of us, I've heard testimonies. You were on drugs. You are on the street, but God bought you out. You had no peace, but when Jesus came into your life, you found peace. You found him, and he gave you the peace that surpassed all understanding. Now, you've decided to get baptized, and you've committed to God for all that he's done for you, at least tell somebody how you came to be. Tell somebody of the God. Tell somebody about Jesus, the one who took you out of the pit. Don't you want someone else to experience what you experience? You, I'm talking to you. Remember when you were struggling with that addiction? Remember, when you were struggling, you couldn't stop doing that thing you knew you weren't supposed to do. And then Jesus came into your life. Maybe he talked to you through a dream or through a sermon or through a song. And remember when you fell down to your knees and you said, Jesus, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to be better. Remember that time? That time it transformed you. When Jesus came to you, when the Holy Spirit spoke to you, like Jennifer said, it gave you a 360. You were walking back. Now you're walking forward. Don't you want to tell somebody about a Jesus who can change their life as well? If you're shy, that's common. But guess what? No one's telling you to go in front of a crowd of 650 people and say, thus said the Lord. No. Even if you're shy, you have friends. And best believe some of your friends don't even know about the God you serve. You talk to them every day. Start with your friends. And then there you can gain the confidence. Gain the confidence. You can call other people. You can even put some Facebook posts, Instagram posts anything. Even if you're shy, there's always a way to represent Christ. Look, I'm glad and I'm grateful 
that you were able to join us tonight on the early Sabbath evening show. I just want to thank Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer has some information for in case you wanted to get in contact with her. Uh, her email is BibleBelieverMinistry at gmail.com. If you have any questions, just call her. She also has a YouTube channel, which is Bible Believer Ministry. Bible Believer Ministry. Also, she has a prayer line on Saturday evenings. And if you have a pen, write this down or you can rewind the video. It's 310-3727-549. And the pin number is 411-499. Again, I just want to thank Jennifer for her ministry tonight. I just want to thank uh, the team, the team here. There's a lot of people here, so I thank you so much. Without this, without you and God, of course, this wouldn't be a possibility. I just want to thank you viewers once again for watching. And of course, if you're watching and you like what you see, look below. You'll see a red subscribe button. You'll see a bell. Click that bell. Click the subscribe button. And of course, like. Now, the page is Jerusalem French SDA and of course, Philadelphia French SDA Church. If you're watching it through that channel, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Let us pray. Um, bow your heads for a closing prayer. Dear God, we just want to thank you so much because you've done so much for us. I mean, why not? Why not tell other people about a God who is so sweet? About a God, whenever he comes into your life, he makes it better. Why don't we just tell people about a God who can make you happy, about a God who can put joy that the devil ripped away from your life? Why not? Of course, peer pressure and shyness, and we have to fight even ourselves. But God, help us to overcome those hurdles. Because someone here is watching, and they're convicted, and they're like, God, I want to start representing you. But I just don't know how to start. But like Jennifer said, all we have to do is ask. We can ask you for help. We can ask you, God, well, who do I talk to? Again, we can ask you for help. God, send someone my way that you want me to talk to. We don't have to fight this fight by ourselves. We have you, Jesus. And for that, we say thank you. God, I personally vow to represent Christ wherever I go. Someone here who's praying along with me, someone who's watching, they're saying, God, I vow to represent Christ wherever I go. So God, help us to start representing you, even in the little things. Thank you for being you. We love you, Jesus, and we'll talk to you again soon. In your precious holy name, I pray, amen. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next Friday at 8 p.m. See you later.